What's up, guys? Today we are talking Mortal Kombat Onslaught upcoming content. Some data mines, some leaks, some rumors. And so I like to do these leak roundups whenever we go digging in the game files. And whenever I do this, I like to have a special guest join me so we can get their reaction to all the new content as well. So today we are joined by the one and only, the legend himself, Star in Sky. If you guys watch Onslaught content creators, you probably know Star in Sky. If you guys watch Mortal Kombat mobile content creators, you definitely know Star in Sky. Yeah, what's going on, man? I feel bad now. I gave you way less cool of an intro. Yeah, but I'm cool enough, so. That's true. No, no. Just your face on the screen makes it already too cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I actually just need to fill some time because we have really, really juicy stuff we're going to talk about, but it's not all that much. So uh, on that note, I guess we will get right into the first leak. Um, one right. of the first things that we found in the data mine is a new upcoming MK1 character who will have a chronicle after the current one. Oh. MK1. That's the first one. I believe he's next. I'm pretty sure he's next. I'm not 100%, but I'm like 99% sure he's next. I think in the 1.1 like stage event they did on Discord, they teased, although they said, like, not necessarily in this order. So I think he was one of the first mentioned, and he seems to have the most stuff for his chronicle in the files. But I think I think this character and the next one both have all their chronicle stuff already in the files. So I'm surprised he is a sniper. Yeah, a sniper is a very, very interesting call. Um, and by the way, quick note. Uh, this is what it says in the game files, but this may not be what it says when it goes live. So we data mined Cabal last patch, and we were so excited for Cabal. Mostly my fault. I got everyone super excited for Cabal because he had all this crazy uh, critical chance decrease, and he had defense debuff. He was like the ultimate boss killer. He was literally like a support that put all these defense debuffs. He looked amazing. And then... That's what his files said about him up until the day he released. They pushed a little patch and completely changed him to be a tenacity debuff character instead of a defense yeah. debuff character. And I don't know if I was able to get everyone off the hype train quick enough. Um, nope. But so this is a look at what the final version of the character might look like. The devs can literally change their abilities day of so. This is what we've got to go off of, but uh, I do think that they will honor what they said about like the the affinities and the classes of the upcoming characters. And so uh, it was said that we will be getting a new five star sniper. So the first five star sniper and a spirit sniper at that, which means if you're struggling against like Sindel and Arena, not anymore. And uh, that is MK1 Kenshi, who will also round out the MK1 characters for now. Um, and if you look into his abilities, all the MK1 characters have a cameo, right? MK1 Scorpion calls cameo Sub-Zero. MK1 Shang Tsung calls cameo uh, Goro. MK1 Kenshi calls cameo Kung Lao. Hmm. So we'll get to see like a real classic looking Kung Lao from his cameo as well. But yeah, uh, he is going to be Earthrealm. He is going to be a magic damage sniper. And yeah, obviously he's going to basically have Sento just go across the field and hack people up but so if this kit is what it stays i mean he's going to apply marked which makes the uh enemy take increased amounts of critical hits so that's really good um and then whichever like he applies that to a defender enemy whoever has the highest defense and then everyone gets uh ignore defense when attacking the marked foe and mk1 teammates will ignore double the amount so he's going to help you melt a tank oh wow Yep. And then whenever he does damage that doesn't get blocked or dodged, he gains power towards his special. Uh, he gets a boost to either the counterattack damage or a boost to the ignore defense, which we'll talk about. But he has a really cool and really unique special. Uh, his auto, he'll send Sento to attack and deal damage. And if the person he's attacking has weaken, the Kung Lao cameo will swoop in and do additional damage and maybe do a knock up and send them airborne. Um, and then Kenshi will hit with a second Sento Spirit and do even more damage. Um, I want to jump to the combos real quick before we go back to, uh, 
the uh, special. So during familial teachings, after his spirit attack, he dives into the fray feet first. This is the, the Kung Lao cameo. So he'll do extra damage and apply an accuracy debuff. So that's cool. Um, and then the second combo after the special, Kung Lao comes in for another cameo, does damage to whoever's closest Kenshi, does damage and hits them with weaken. And if the hat lands a crit, then it bounces to a nearby enemy dealing damage and hitting them with weaken too. But so he can get that weaken that he needs for his special from his combo. But his special is really his bread and butter and it's really, really cool. He can use his special on himself or on an enemy, which is why it's called mm. duality. So he'll either give himself the ability to block completely and counterattack with knockback. So he can like make himself really tanky if there's a melee opponent on him, or he can use it to go on the offensive and send Sento to an enemy doing damage that ignores defense and block, uh, ignores defense, ignores block and ignore defense boost reset after an attack from duality is made. So he'll just keep getting that ignore defense reset. But yeah, he can basically have Sento help guard him and have perfect block and counterattack, or he can send Sento to go maul someone. That is really cool. Yeah, I think he's got a fun kit. And I mean, just being the first five star sniper, as long as he's got a nice high damage stat, it's going to be great. Plus, he's got that MK1 synergy, so he'll make them ignore a bunch of defense, which is really cool. Wait, five star Aaron Black isn't a sniper? No, he's a support. Oh. Well, I still don't have him, so. Yeah. He's he's good, oh, but he's a cool. support. This is the first five star sniper. Right now, Sindel is the best sniper in the game, but as soon as we get MK1 Kenshi, that's no longer the case. Um, another uh something something from the data mine. So most new characters, especially if they have their own chronicle, they get uh their own relic. And so he will come with a relic in his Chronicle event store, presumably called Clan Blade, which will be equipable to anyone who's a sniper. As of now, everything you're hearing in this video subject to change. Um, the primary and secondary stats, not that exciting dodge and accuracy, mm -hmm. but the relic effect is going to give percent attack and percent block. And then there's the relic effect. As soon as the battle starts, he gets a special meter gain per unique teammate affinity. And considering he is spirit and MK1 Scorpion is body and MK1 Shang is mind, that's all three unique affinities just on the MK1 team right there. And then he will apply weaken to the enemy for a certain amount of time, which will help with his special or sorry, with his auto. And then when he's not in a melee engagement, he gets a dodge boost. So when he's like trading with other snipers, he'll be... Uh, dodging more of their incoming attacks as well. I don't know, that doesn't sound that mind-blowing. Yeah, I mean, it works really well with this kid. It's not completely insane, but the fact that it gives percent attack to a sniper, like that alone makes it very, very good. And the fact that he starts with a bunch of special meter gain is pretty crazy. We don't know the amount, but like, what if he gets 20% yeah, if... special meter gain per affinity and then he starts with 60%, you know? Yeah, if you can get him really like really high damage he could one shot some somebody in arena for example yeah yeah i mean even if not like he's still a five star sniper so he's gonna do a lot of damage yeah okay but, but all right so but it, th this relic seems to be the like geared towards arena for like very fast battles uh i, I mean i it, don't think it's gonna be that useful in like any other that has waves because you only get this once at the start of the battle so by the time you get to the boss you're not gonna have any advantage left well it does say when not in melee engagement they get a dodge boost so anytime I mean, he's not literally going in melee he'll be dodging ranged attacks coming at him so that's good but no i, yeah, I, I agree guess. it's it's not the uh so the, the other thing is right now snipers don't have an epic relic so the reason everyone uses matoka is because it gives a ton of percent attack and it has that auto that can stun. But what about if Kafala? Uh, I believe Kafala gives health and defense as the percents, and it gives like attack as the primary. Something like that. This one actually gives percent attack, so this might be the highest percent attack snipers can get. 
Mm -hmm. But either way, just having an epic relic for snipers will be nice. So. Yeah, that's true. So we got that. But but all right. So you're decently hyped for this character, but not not crazy crazy hyped. So uh, we'll go right to the next one then. So uh, maybe if they if you see really good character, don't get too excited because maybe that's why Cabal got nerfed because they saw your reaction. Yeah, right. I said it looked too good. So, so yeah, you're right. This yeah. guy looks mediocre. Leave him alone. Yeah, it's complete trash. All right. Well, then let's talk about <laughs> another complete trash character that I'm not excited about at all. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> so, um, so they teased MK1 Shang Tsung. They said an MK1 five star spirit affinity sniper. Looks like we found him. They said uh, there's going to be a mind affinity attacker, a five star attacker. So we're getting our first five star sniper and our first five star attacker. And I may have alluded to this in the previous video that we shot, but uh, we're getting a new member of the classic team. Mm. So you could say by nerfing Cabal, they kind of nerf the whole classic team synergy. So. Yeah, no, uh, like in general, I would say yes. They still work decently well together because Cabal's whole thing is that he boosts damage over time effects and this guy is going to apply a lot of damage over time effects. So they still mm -hmm. have synergy. But yeah, I mean, Cabal was just so much cooler when he was doing defense debuff that he doesn't do now. But I think mm -hmm. they they still have some uh, stuff here that kind of suggests that these guys want to be really good into bosses. So I think they're still going to be boss melters, which is interesting. But so this will be a mind attacker. So another five star mind character, which is good. Uh, it will be ranged and earth realm and classic and Lin Kuei, and he will do magic damage. So the passive, uh, he provides a boost to damage over time effects for all classic team members, and he extends the duration of the effects. So the classic team is, is currently just going to be all damage over time. And then Sub-Zero gains triple the dot boost against bosses. So in boss tower, he should do some some really nice damage over time. First auto. So I have a little question yeah. about the damage over time. So how how does this work? Is it percentage of the of their health or is it based on your own like attack? It depends on the dot. Each dot works differently. So like poison is uh I want to say poison is 12%. I can double check, but I think poison is 12% of the attacker's attack. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, all healing is cut in half while you're poisoned. Um, mm -hmm. Burn, I want to say, is like, I think also 12% of the person's attack every other second. But it also burns like for the equivalent of like 12% of their special meter gain every other second, something like that. Um, and then bleed is 15% of the attacking character's attack. So everything is based on the attacker because in so MK far, Burble, yeah. all the dots, they scale from enemy's health, which right. makes dots extremely effective against right. like high health enemies, yeah. Right, so far, none of them scale off the enemy. Yeah, that makes sense. That That's like the fair way to do it. I guess. I mean, I, I like dots that scale off the enemy health, but obviously in boss tower, it might be a little strong. So instead, they're having to scale off yep. the attacker and giving it like a triple dot boost. Um, but so then uh, his first uh, auto, he'll freeze the ground below the enemy and he'll hit them with impede, which is like slows their ability to get their cooldowns back for their auto abilities. And then he raises a chunk of ice into them that does damage. His second auto... He'll do uh, basically a projectile doing a bunch of damage and he'll apply a bleed. And then his let's let's jump to his uh, combos real quick. Um, all right. Actually, it makes more sense to talk about his special. So his special, he will summon a decoy like ice double that has a, a percentage of his max HP and it will do an AOE. And if you're in that AOE, it applies unhealable. And it does a boost to any dot damage taken by anyone within the radius. So I imagine you'll be able to place that and then everyone around it can't be healed and is taking increased dot damage and people might start targeting it. So it's got some okay. utility. 
And then so his first combo, when that's destroyed, it will do an AoE explosion that will apply a bleed when it gets blown up. And then his other combo that's a ability modifier after his ground freeze, he'll do an ice shower that does damage and he'll give his teammates who are targeting that same enemy a mastery buff, which will help them to land their debuffs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's an attacker. Um, now I did not see anything about like a new relic for him, but considering he has a fatality relic already that clearly was designed for an offensive character and seems to have what looks like this version of Sub-Zero on it, I think it's a safe assumption that this Sub-Zero Fatality Relic has been waiting for him all along because it is attack and critical chance. And if a frozen enemy dies, then you get a bunch of a uh, of, uh, special meter and doing more damage to frozen enemies and stuff like that. So there's... I have four of those sitting in my inventory. I I have to get this man so I can use it. Yeah, this is the, the one you've been waiting for. Yep. So we have a, a few more things to talk about but that's that's everything that was found i guess except one one thing that i'll throw in right at the end that's everything that was found that should be coming through the rest of this patch and again the devs might change the abilities or whatever this is just what's in there right now don't shoot the messenger if they change anything um other things that they teased coming later on they said there's going to be uh and th this is probably for like 1.2.0 there's going to be a body affinity warrior and a female character who's going to do AOE damage, applying sustained damage through damage over time. Her healing effects provide significant survivability, especially for classic characters and outworld teammates. So a classic outworld female who makes sense to be a body warrior. My Marina. best... Yeah, that was my guess. Like, it could be Shiva. It could be Melina. It it could be Katana, because they've been doing hers Outworld. It could be a melee Sindel. Um, yeah, it could be a lot could, of people. Could, yeah, it could be classic Jade. Um, th there weren't that many classic females, but yeah, it could be, could be any of those. Um, so those are my but guesses. Dots, dots and healing, that's, for me, points to Melina mostly. Yep. See, what makes this interesting is we found a Venomous Melina, and Venomous Melina, like, it sounds like that version of Melina would do damage over time, but this one is said to work with classic teammates. Now, maybe she's not classic, she just has a lot of dots and is therefore going to work well with them, but uh, we've been kind of assuming that they're classic because they said that she this character will sense. work well with classic, so... So yeah, we'll see. Um, and then they dropped one more teaser for one other character, and I've like very little to go off of on this one. They just said this character loves animals. Nightwolf. Right. That was like my only guess is Nightwolf. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what everyone jumped to. But if you have any other ideas, leave them in the comments. And then I got one more pretty exciting leak for you. I was digging around in the the character names file and I found a, a character name that got added like is literally the last one added but I don't think they're coming this patch I think they're coming next patch check this out Eastmaker our first guest character coming to Onslaught. Presumably. Is, how confirmed is this? I mean, like, you can see it's on the character names list, so it, like, they could change their mind, but the timing lines up. If we assume that this is not this patch, but next patch, that's around the time Peacemaker will come to MK1. And he's a DC character, which is owned by WB. So... I want to see Omni-Man. I don't know if we'll get Omni-Man, but Peacemaker is like WB already owns that. And he's like, it would make sense to co-promote Peacemaker coming to both games. So have you seen uh, the Omni-Man just came into Fortnite too? So 
See, I, I of all the guest characters, I want Homelander the most. Like, it's oh not even my close. god, yes! I want Homelander so bad. Um, just give me the whole That'd cast of the sick. boys. That'd be great. Just make I this know, a right? Mortal Kombat versus the boys. That'd be great. I'm <laughs> cool with that. Do they have any the boys games? Not yet. No, but I, I keep seeing ads for Last Fortress has like four or five the boys characters being added to it. I've never wanted to play Last Fortress, but when I'm seeing like, look at A Train, look at Homelander, look at Soldier Boy, I'm like, oh, how fun is it? <laughs> but isn't cool. it like based on an old comic? So the characters existed yeah. for a long time. That there's yeah. nothing like no games made. Not that I'm aware of. Like maybe huh. maybe Google will say otherwise, but certainly nothing I've heard of. But uh, but Peacemaker is a little different because he's a DC hero. But uh, yeah, I think. Like I said, like this is from the newest version of the game, the character names file. So like what you're looking at, the reason it's format differently is like where it says like Tarkatan Warrior Male and then Tarkatan Warrior. That's like if in the code you see Tarkatan Warrior Male, what you're displaying on the character select page is Tarkatan Warrior. So like this, mm -hmm. this, this file just exists to be like, this is how you show the names in the game. So they're saying like, if you see Peacemaker in the code, this is how you show the Peacemaker name in the game. So, okay. so yeah, I think uh, I think we spoiled a little surprise of theirs. I think there is also, I mean, it's it, it does line up for it to be a character, but it could also be like a like a weapon, maybe. I don't know. Oh no, like this is relic. this is literally characters. Oh, it's just characters. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. It all lines up perfectly. So yeah. So I'm just remembering my days when I played Apex Legends. They have Peacemaker. No wait, that's is that is that the name of the weapon in Apex? I would believe it if it was, but oh, I... that's Peacekeeper. Never mind. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, close enough. Yeah, that would be cool. Have Maybe. you seen the meme with Omni Man? Omni Squad. I don't think so. Oh my god, you have to watch it. All right, we'll do meme review. <laughs> we'll we'll do that uh, after the credits. But yeah, how how hyped are you? I mean, do you know anything about Peacemaker as a character? Are you hyped for him at all? uh to be honest i don't know much about the character i've seen him in mk1 trailers and stuff right. but yeah i don't know much about his story yeah I, I haven't seen his movie or anything but yeah that's yeah we'll, we'll see if you know more about peacemaker let us know in the comments what you think and uh out of curiosity like i i read something where like in the comics he has like a pet eagle so maybe Peacemaker is the one who loves animals. I don't know. If you're a Peacemaker fan, does he love animals? Uh, let me know in the comments if I should be a bigger Peacemaker fan and if I should watch his movie. But yeah. <laughs> so of all the characters and the stuff teased, MK1 Kenshi, classic Sub-Zero, unnamed, potentially classic Outworld female warrior, Peacemaker, what are you most hyped for? I mean, I like Kenshi as a character, but from his kids... Uh, doesn't seem super exciting to me. I'm probably gonna skip on this one because I, like, I don't have unlimited orbs, so I'll probably keep them for Sub Zero because I do have classic Cabal. Maybe he will make him less terrible, and also I can finally use my relic on him. So, All right, I think so I'll go for Sub Zero. Classic Sub gets your non. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, from just like a visual design perspective, I'm the most excited for classic uh, Sub-Zero. I just think he's the coolest. But I am super, like, I think you're sleeping on Kenshi. Like, you're looking at his abilities, but like, if you just look at Sindel for her abilities, like, her abilities are all right. They're not bad, but her, her abilities, like, all right, unhealable. All right, that's kind of her thing. What it is is snipers stay safe and do a ton of damage so this is going to be a five star spirit affinity sniper like kenshi should melt things safely so i don't care that much about his abilities i just want him to blow people apart with sento and i suspect he will so i mean i'll wait for your video review and then i'll decide if i should summon him or not yeah we'll see i don't want to get too hyped about him now he'll he'll get released with a nerf so yeah but yeah I'll actually they should they should buff him. He sucks. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he looks terrible. Get on it, Just Devs. Double his damage and yeah. maybe maybe then he'll be worth it. Yeah, I agree. Double his damage. That's what he needs. Star and Sky should be a consultant for the game. You heard it here first. Absolutely. My first advice, double damage of all the characters <laughs> and reduce health of all the bosses. That's it. Sounds perfect. All, all right. the problems solved. You have my full endorsement on that. We got to get a petition going, guys. Start it in the comments. But yeah. 
Uh, that's pretty much everything. We've babbled on long enough. We'll do a, a meme review in the post credits, I guess. But um, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know in the comments which character you guys are most excited for of the ones that we have teased here. And uh, yeah, make sure to go subscribe to Star and Sky. I'll put his channel stuff in the video description below. Yeah, again, thank you guys so, so much for checking out this video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, leave a comment. Go do all the same things on Star and Sky's channel, and I will see you guys real soon. Until next time, peace! What's up, guys? Today we are talking about Datamind upcoming content for Mortal Kombat Onslaught. We're doing a bit of a leak roundup, and so whenever I do this, I always like to be joined by a special guest so I can get their reactions on some of the stuff as well. So today we are joined by the one and only, the legend himself, Star in Sky. And a dog. And a dog. <laughs> All right, that'll be in the outtake section. Hold on. That's why I didn't want to open the door, but she wouldn't stop scratching at the door. Hold on. Okay. Take two. Hold on. I'm just waiting. Hey! Stop. <sighs> wow. Normally when I'm like recording a video, I'll literally tell my girlfriend, I'll be like, can you just take them to the park? Like I only need like 15, 20 minutes to record and this will be easier if I just at the park. Normally they aren't making noise while I'm recording, but of course this time they are. You should embrace it. Make it like a part of your thing. Absolutely not. Dude, it drives people insane. They hate it. Okay. If I ever have to leave in a section where the dogs are barking, which every once in a while I do, people are like, oh, God, can you edit that out? Oh, horrible. It made my dog start barking because I was listening to it on my speakers. Like, they, people get so mad. Yeah, my cats are quiet, so that's, that's yeah. good, I guess. Your cats don't bark? Nope. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. Oh, my God. What, it's really, like, I'm not even kidding you, though, when I say, like, these dogs are normally very quiet. I don't want to say they never bark. This is highly out of the ordinary. There's no one here. It's the puppy. She's blind, and I don't know what she thinks she's barking at. Oh my God. <sighs> okay. Hair check. All right, good. Always stop in the hair and makeup trailer before shoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, sometimes people will ask me that like i'll be on stream people think i wear like eye makeup because i have thick eyelashes I, like i genuinely get a weird amount of comments of people being like are you wearing eyeliner I'm like no but so <laughs> i've stopped just saying no to people and i've started being like i always stop at the hair and makeup trailer before i record why wouldn't i yeah that shuts them up but one right. time you should put an eyeliner and see what people say <laughs> oh yeah yeah, I just want, I got raccoon eyes in one video. Be like, what? <laughs> Eyeliner? No. Yeah. So people know how it looks so right. they can compare. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>